Okay, so who is speaking now? He has finished speaking, so I'll continue now. Recording in progress. Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasadhi Sri Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, 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 First, I would offer, like to offer my heartly obeisances unto my lotus feet of my Gurudev. When a, when a living entity gets blessed, when they are extremely fortunate, then then the living entity gets the opportunity to do sadhu sangha, to get association of a pure devotee of the Lord. And then they get the unflinching faith, which is transcendental. And this grows into... This develops and grows towards the paramardic, paramardic like it's transcendental. Transcendental, like getting association of a unified sadhu, it's so rare. And when this nourishes and when it grows, then the person enters in bhajan kriya, like doing activities related to bhajan. And then there are two types of bhajan kriya one is nishtita bhajan, and second is nishtita bhajan. Sri Lavishna Chakravarti Pad, he explained there are six types of Anishtita Bhajan Kriya where they are feeling the mood of separation and their mind is not centered and they are not feeling grounded at all. So that's why that Bhajan Kriya is known as Anishtita Bhajan. So it's like sometimes faith is coming and sometimes it's not. So Nishtha comes and sometimes it's like Damadol, like it's not fixed. It's going here and there. So, so there are six stages in the in it, separate six and 
When we do sadhana after studying these six stages, then when then our nishtha, then we reach the stage of nishtha and ruchi. So bhajan kriya comes in navanarth nivritti. It the, removes our anarth. And then Vishwanath Chakravarti has explained there are four types of anarthas in the heart of a sadha. That four types of anartha are Sarudra, Hridayadavalla, Asad Krishna, and Aparad. These four exist in the heart of sadha. So these are the four types of sadha and four types of anarthas that. <coughs> These types of anartha they are explained like so within these four types there is like subdivided into four separate so four into four there are total sixteen so in scriptures it is written and explained properly bhakti anartha all types of anarthas are explained so due to the sinful activities of a lot of past times and doing bhajan, the problems come, obstacles come, the diseases come due to this. And this is known as Dushkrit Uttha Anartha due to the sinful activities of the bad karmas, like giving pain to someone. Because of that karma, like problems come in the life because of that karma. The second is Sukriti Uttanartha. Like in the past life, there are, because of the pious activities of the last past lives, we get lots of money, lots of property, wealth. This money and wealth so then the person is majorly occupied in protecting that money and wealth so they are always absorbed in protecting their wealth that they possess so this is also obstacle in the it is also causing the obstacle in the bhajan so this is Sukriti Uttanartha and the third one Bhakti Uttanartha Bhakti Uttanartha is that sadhak they are even after performing bhajan activities properly, naturally, naturally at some time they get attracted to something else and and they are they start running after name, fame, money and because of that this is bhakti uttanartha because the bhakti's nature is naturally even if you practice bhakti anyhow naturally a lot of types of facilities and everything comes to you when you start practicing bhakti like people start to respect that person and people start to give him donations and so like the everything comes and then the person gets absorbed in and keep running after name paying money this is caused by bhakti uttanartha so this is also obstacle on the path of bhakti but sadha here and whatever they get sadha and all the things that they get they offer they they use it as per their need and they use it as they need it and the rest of it they invest it in the krishna seva bhakti kusulata this is like they just take what's needed for them and the rest of remaining of donation and everything name fame respect everything they offer to guru and krishna so this so so whatever facilities we get while performing bhakti, whatever we get, we have to put that in Bhagavad Seva. It is good. Because in scriptures it is said, Dharma Artha Kam Moksha. 
like liberation of the soul, money, everything. Everything. So wherever Bhakti Devi goes, these things run behind Bhakti Devi. Dharma, Artha, Kam, Moksha. Like righteousness, everything, righteousness, money, name, fame, and everything runs behind Bhakti Devi. Like the servant of Bhakti Devi. But at that time, Sadak is humble and they are absorbed in their mood and they just think about how to develop our own bhajan. That's the Sadak is thinking. This is Bhakti Uttanartha. And the fourth category is a Pradhutanartha. In past life, because of Aprad like Nama Aprad, Dhamma Aprad, Seva Aprad, Vaishnava Aprad, due to the results of that, there are a lot of problems come on the path of Bhakti. Even destroying a lot of Aprad, but Vaishnava Aprad is topmost. It's like it's not, it does not go away from the heart of Sadhak. Vaishnava Prad is like very intense. Even if Vaishnava Prad goes away from the heart, then the commentators of the scriptures they say the smell, the smell of that sin stays within the heart of the person. Like, there's an example, like in a box. If you put a camphor in that box and you then take out that camphor from the box, then for some time the smell of the smell of the camphor will come from that box after even if the camphor is out. So what I'm trying to say is that Aparad is especially Vaishnava Prad. Even if Vaishnava Prad is forgiven and gone, the smell of that sin the smell of that sin stays in the heart and it does not dim goes away properly at that time sadhak the sadhak is humble and still and they pray to god so time is limited there are so much examples it's not possible to explain each and everything in detail but still I'll try and I'm trying at Bhakti Uttanartha like like Sadak is like outside like they are so much angry they are feeling so much zeal that's then Dhanatarla Duruvikampa and Visheshangra Tarangrangni and these things manifest slowly and slowly but Sadak is if he is completely absorbed in bhajan and sadhan and they are in association of pure devotee of the Lord, due to that, all the anarthas slowly and slowly, they go away. So moving forward, nishtha. Then the sadhak is the state of nishtha. Nishtha is Ni stan, like ni, like definitely, like his mind and heart, it gets absorbed and it gets grounded. So in the starting, people don't have nishta; their mind is always going here and there. But yet, Bhakti Sant Saraswati Parabhupad has said. Like when you take Naam or you chant holy names, even if your mind is disturbed, your mind is going here around, but if you chant the holy names regularly, fix the number of rounds, then, then slowly and slowly your mind will become stabilized and it will be good. So this is the glorification of chanting properly, holy names properly and mantra, chantanam, so these are all these explained in scriptures. Slowly and slowly the sadhak, the more and more their mind is stable and centered and serving Guru and Vaishnava. And so in that same amount their man, like their heart, their mind, they will get absorbed in Harikata and chanting holy names. So after Nishta, the sadhak reaches the state of Ruchi 
like exactly like that sadak if you're hungry the food will taste so much nice so when a person is uh, doing a uh, bhajan the ruchi increases like the, the person feels so much hunger the more and more more and more you will enter the trial the mellows of the transcendental world then the person reaches the stage of asakti so it's like a, a person is going stage by stage so then the sadak reaches the stage of asakti and asakti is like trying to attain the object and subject of divine love it uh, such desire manifests in our heart we cannot live without this and exactly like that sadak and asakti dasha when they arrive in the asakti dasha then they get so much absorbed in holy names and kahari kata and Vishwana Chakravarti Pada has explained Bhajan Ruchi and Bhajan Asakti like the person gets so much absorbed there are two symptoms of Asakti like the first symptom is they get so much absorbed in Bhajan like if you are hungry the example is like if you take food when you are hungry you just see the food when you are hungry your heart feels like oh i want to take this food and you are feeling so much like have a strong desire to eat food when you are hungry exactly like that when sadak in asakti dasha they they take they take chant holy names every day and they follow all the rules and slowly and slowly their anarthas go away and bhajan ruchi and bhajan asakti bhajan means like our ishta deva like we have like we are firm vow we have taken a firm vow to serve our god here vishuna chakravarti pad has said like bhajan asakti like towards guru there's so much asakti towards guru as well like complete faith and attraction towards guru and that same same faith amount of dedication and surrender to guru that same thing get transferred and it nourishes towards the lord so bhajan ruchi and bhajan asakti so this if sadak has the more and more you are asakti towards the lotus feet of your guru the same amount of asakti you will have towards the god the backbone of spiritual life what is the backbone of spiritual life it is the firm faith unflinching strong faith towards the lotus feet of guru this is known as the backbone of spiritual life the more and more faith more and more trust more and more you have in the lotus feet of guru exact the same amount you will proceed and develop spiritually this is the process this is process this is how you go through all the stages quickly the when when the person moves from asakti stage they enter the stage of rati and uh, during rati they realize about their spiritual form like the what is this form of the spiritual form like everyone is the servant of the god slowly and slowly the devotee the practicing devotee or sadak they realize this they realize their transcendental spiritual form and then they attain that in the first tra- dasha it's not happening but slowly and slowly more and more they are dedicated more and more surrendered more and more attached more and more having faith towards guru the more and more they proceed and develop spiritually and the more and more sooner they realize their transcendental spiritual form what is the transcendental spiritual form of everyone they are all servants of krishna the such mood manifest in the heart of the das means like having a strong desire to serve having a strong desire to serve so this desire manifests in the heart of the sadak 
and then the sadhak moves. So in the spiritual path or bhakti raja, our acharyas have explained two things. One is utkanta, curiosity, and avesh, abjavsh, utkanta, utkanta, and avesh. Utkanta and Avesh. Utkanta and Avesh. These two things. So person have these things, do things in the heart and then they develop. Like Avesh, like you need to be completely absorbed in the holy names. Like you have to be completely absorbed in the holy names. So those two things are curiosity and absorption. So, so even if there is so much time spent to attain the divine love, but yet the curiosity never dies they're always motivated with curiosity like the example is given like if you plant the tree the, the plant the tree will grow with time and the flowers will come and then the fruits will come exactly like that sadhak the seed of bhakti in the heart of sadhak it grows slowly and slowly so like our hearts is like a field and seed of bhakti is bhakti which is entering our heart and then you nourish the seed you take care of it you put water and you take the so slowly and slowly that seed grows it becomes a plant then it becomes a bigger plant and then it becomes a tree and then it gives flowers and fruits exactly like that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he gave example to Rupa Goswami Look, in this material world, when you are doing bhajan, a person who is so fortunate they get the association of Guru, they get the association and then they take Diksha Mantra and every day they fall, they do Shravan and Kirtan. So this is like nourishment of that seed, like getting association of Sadhu doing your Guru Mantras. Due to the Mantras given by Guru, in the heart of the devotees, the desire to serve Krishna, it manifests. The Guru is like waking you up is waking that desire up the thing that is sleeping and the guru is trying to wake that thing up so people who are acting to sleep you cannot wake them up so bhakti siddhanta prabhupada has written so a person who is sleeping for real you can wake that person up but a person who is acting, who is fakely sleeping, like acting to sleep, how will you wake that person up? It's not possible to wake such person up. So I'm saying this because in the form of Jiva, so when you get, when the Jiva gets uh, the desire to serve Krishna manifest in the heart of Sada, it's there. Such desire is there. The Guru, what does Guru do? Guru has like transcendental power. Mantra has transcendental power. There's mystic power in the mantra. And Mahaprabhu is giving example. This is like mystic power in this mantra. Exactly like that. Guru in the heart of disciples. They give Nam Mantra and because of that the see the vritti, the desire to serve Krishna. This desire they are waking this up through this mantra slowly and slowly. The desire to serve Krishna will increase and will manifest in its form. First with Santras, then Dasaras, and then Sakharas, and what's the love? Like all the moods, like moods of friendship, moods of parental affection, and then mood of Madhurila, like the mood of divine mellows and divine love. It goes stage by stage. The potential 
it depends on the potential of the product <coughs> gene and slowly and slowly it develops itself but but some people so due to lack of association of pure devotee the person they are just thinking themselves and they are preaching their own opinions so it's like this is not this is not for bhakti because it's not coming from the realization jaise rang aise sang like the like the this is materialistic opinion this is material opinion jaise dekho like ek bari aalu like if you take a a lot of kgs of potato and if there is one bad potato so because of that bad potato rotten potato the, because of the association of that bad potato the rotten potato after a few days all the potatoes they all will become rotten and they will go to waste so to give this example in scriptures it is explained so this is the explain the example given in the scriptures we have to understand this some people they they are just saying their own opinions without any realization they are just preaching but because of all association if someone can manifest uh, madhurya ras so this thing la guru dev they see this thing and they say narad rishi ka sang diya sab narad rishi gave association he gave mantra to dhruv he gave mantra to prahlad he he also yudhishthir bhim arjun nakul sahadev he gave mantra to pandavas as well he also gave his association in bhagavatam this example is given इसके द्वारा प्रमाणित होता है जी that narad rishi it is proven in scriptures that narad rishi while wandering he he arrived hastinapur in the house of hastinapur yudhishthir maharaj and he also did association of narad narad rishi also gave association to gopis he was with gopis so did every everyone attain good mood of gopi no it depends on the potential of the jiva the bhakti vinod thakur is strict riding so when the marginal potency the jivas the souls manifested from the when they were created all the potential is in every soul and that same potential it like comes into the light when you are in association of pure devotee of the lord and it will grow and it will take its full form and it will grow and manifest its pure form so like there are five types like if you are on the banks of ganga river on the banks of ganga river you plant five seeds like a mango seed and a bitter gourd corella seed lemon seed different seeds the with the seed of mango the mango tree will come and you will get mangoes from that and with the seed of karela you will get karela like bitter god so this is the examples given in scriptures that's why so these are the tatva siddhantas written by guru and we have to understand this we should not accept any one thing what anyone is saying you will derail from your path and your mind will wander and your heart will pan wander and will go here and there so we should have faith in guru and we should understand these things and then move so after asakti dasha the asada can touch vati and after rati there is bhav and in the state of bhav this bhav gets matured and it manifests in the form of divine love prem then the person enters the prem dasha the stage of prem so these are the explanations given by vishwanath chakravarti pa in madhurya paradambini iske sundar roop mein 
So this is explained in Madhurya Kadamani very beautifully. So that's why we have to understand this and follow. And the more and more we chant our mantras, holy names, with flinching faith, and we we have firm and flinching faith in the lotus feet of Guru, then the Bhakti Devi will grow in our heart and take full form, manifest its full form. So don't be scared. Don't be scared at all. Because to attain Bhakti, a lot like big 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 sadhak they are doing a lot of austerities hard austerities you can see Dhruv Maharaj he didn't do a lot of austerities but yet Dhruv Maharaj is comes into the categories of pure devotee no he's not coming in the category of pure devotee Dhruv is not in the category of pure devotee when he was a young his child the five-year-old Dhruva, he gave up everything of his material life and then he did bhajan sadhan. What did he get? What did he attain? He attained Dhruv Lok, place for Dhruv, palace, a complete Lok, a complete universe for Dhruv. So that's Dhruv Maharaj. Is Hmm? In Bhakti. So, Dhruv Maharaj was not a pure devotee. And Prahlad Maharaj, he did a lot of renunciation. His father, Hiranyakashipu, he tried to kill him a lot of times. But Prahlad Maharaj, he was a pure devotee, but yet, where, where, what did he achieve? He used by Kunta. So Prahlad Maharaj is comes in the form of Gyani Bhakta. And moving further, Shuddha Bhakta Ambrish Maharaj comes, who he offered Bhagavad Seva to a lot of people in Indra, and he comes in the category of pro devotees. And then Premik Bhakta, which is explained in scriptures, Hanumanji. He is known as Premik Bhakta, Hanuman, God Hanuman. And, but even after being a Premik Bhakta, they have unflinching faith and so much love towards Ramchandra. Srinath. And Sitana. So there is no difference. This is the topmost thing. Lord Ramchandra is Bhagavat. And, but yet, Hanumanji said, My Ishtadev is Ramchandra. And this is this is like unflinching faith towards his Ishtadev, towards his God. So this is how you define the unflinching faith in your God, Nishta. So this is being explained through Hanuman, but there were so many qualities in Hanuman. He used to serve a lot. He served a lot, but Hanuman, he had Bhagavad Buddhi. He thinks like, oh Lord Ramchandra is God. This is Ashwarya Muri Bhakti. Like they are thinking, oh Ram is God. Lord Ram is God. So that is the category of Premi Bhakta. And then there comes Prema Parbhakta. Like Pandavas, like Yudhishthir, Bhim, Arjun, Nakul, Sahadev, Draupadi, Kunti. And they come in this category. And there is very beautiful mood of service. But the thing here we should notice is that that they also have Bhagavad Bhakti, Bhagavad Bhakti towards Krishna, which means like Arjun thinks he is saying that Krishna is my friend, like Sakha, but but even after thinking like this, he is thinking that Krishna, Krishna is God and 
and like creator, maintainer, destroyer of all the universes. Arjun, when when Arjun saw the Krishna's eternal form of like all universes, so Arjun got scared after seeing that form of Krishna, and he jumped out of the chariot and he folded his hands in front of Crunch and he started to glorify Krishna. This is all explained in scriptures. And after Prem Prempar Bhakt, this Prematuk Bharat, like Udav, in Srimad Bhagavat, Sri Rasukadeva Goswami Pad, he is explained to Parikshit Maharaj. So Devo Samipad explained that him Maharaj Parikshit, Udhav, he, he is of the, of the Yadukul dynasty, he is the most knowledgeable person in the whole dynasty. And he he gives he's giving advice to Krishna. He's giving advice to Krishna on how to run his kingdom. And the Krishna who knows everything, who is powerful and he's like knows everything, yet he's taking advice from Udhav. He's asking what should I do and what should I not do. So one time two letters came. One letter was from Yudhishthir Maharaj and to perform a fire sacrifice and the second letter oh in, oh, in the first letter Yudhishthira Maharaj you write that if, if you do not come then we will not perform the fire sacrifice and we will not celebrate the event so you have to come that was the invitation letter sent by Yudhishthira Maharaj to Krishna and Yudhishthira Maharaj said like we definitely expect you to come, so we will wait for you, please come, and when you are here in our fire sacrifice, then we will do fire sacrifice, otherwise we will not. And the second letter came from Jarasand. And so the kings, they were trapped, all those kings who were trapped, they all gathered together and they Krishna sent a letter to Krishna asking for help and they were like our life is in trouble please save us from like Jarasan that has trapped us all and Jarasan wants to kill us all and he has trapped us in prison so please come and protect us so when Krishna got these letters Krishna himself he started to ask for advice from Udav. He asked Udav, tell me, what should I do? All the kings, they are trapped because of their own karma. What should I do? They are suffering their karma. Because the jiva, all the entities, they are suffering their karma, they are going through their karma. People are doing good, they are getting good and those who are getting bad, they are getting bad. So Krishna is saying like all the kings they are suffering because of their own karma. And then the second hand there is Yudhishthir. Yudhishthir Maharaj is like my family. Like Kunti is my aunt, very dear aunt. He's, he's my father's sister. And Kunti is like our blood relationship with Yudhishthir. So where should I do? What should I do? Where should I go? At that time, Udhav gave a very beautiful advice. He said, Prabhu, you can do fire sacrifice a bit later, but you should, should go to the prison of Jarasan and help all the kings. And Jarasan wants to kill them. So, so your first responsibility is to help. You are here to defeat the demons and Jarasand is a demon, so it would be good. Like in all the ages, you, you manifest in the world to kill the demons and bad people and to maintain the peace and harmony in the world. And the people who come into your lotus feet, you have to help them. This is your responsibility. You are Sarnagat Palak. Like whoever comes to your lotus feet, you help them. 
So you should go and protect the kings. So Prashna heard this advice from Mudav, and like a human, he he said, he said, Udav, you have given a very beautiful advice to me. It's very nice. Like Krishna is, he can decide everything himself, but yet he is giving respect and he is giving opportunity to Udav. And Udav is giving very beautiful advice. So, so Krishna's most close and dear friend in Dwarka was Udav. And Udav was the disciple of Braspati, who was the guru of all devtas. And and Udok was very grounded and very calm and very knowledgeable person. So, Udav, so Krishna sent Udav to Braj to pacify the gopis and the Brajavasis. Srimad Bhagavatam, this is all explained. So there are so many glories of Buddha, like Krishna himself. He, he glorified Buddha himself with his mouth. Krishna glorified Buddha. Buddha is not less, but yet Buddha is known as why? Because when Udhav was in Vrindavan and he saw the divine love manifesting in the hearts of Rajvasis, people of Raj, especially about the gopis, love of the gopis and Radharani, Udhav saw that and he got shocked and surprised. Like, so such like Krishna is like why is Krishna is sitting in Dwarka Mutra? Why has he left his Raj? Udav is shocked. He's thinking like this is the most thing. And why Krishna is giving them the separation? So Udhav in six slokas he he prayed into the lotus feet of gopis and especially rather in six shlokas he prayed and so in the six shlokas Udha he prayed into the lotus feet of gopis and especially Sri Radharani. But Udhav didn't stay in Braj. And that time Udhav, he went to Mathra. But after that Udhav, when Krishna disappeared from the material world, then Udhav, he went to Braj. He sat in near Radha Kund and now that place is under Udhav Kund. It's like on the other bank of the Kusum Sarovar, there's Udhav Kund. And Udhav is performing hard austerities there. And Udhav is performing austerities to attain the love of Raj. But yet he's not attained that. So I am this time I've taken to explain this all to you because it, this does not happen just by getting association. You can do association of sadhu. Two things happen. One is like slowly, slowly, your anarthas go away when you listen to Harikatha. Slowly and slowly, all your anarthas they start disappearing from our hearts. And second thing is like because of satsang or the potential that is in our hearts it wakes up and it starts manifesting himself and slowly and slowly develops and the fruits come so this is what's been explained so these are six types Types of devotees that I've explained, Gani, Shukta Bhakta, and the different types of devotees, Gani Bhakta, Shukta Bhakta, Premi Bhakta, Prem Bhakta, Prem Bhakta.
सदैव प्रेमातुर भक्त so brajwasis there are brajwasis and in the or among all the love is coming from sri radharani and this all is proved by udhav in scriptures so udhav krishna himself he is establishing the divine love and the special kind of love that comes out from radharani so to establish that krishna did this leela so while doing sadha sadhana and bhajan slowly and slowly we attain this mood we serve our ishtadev we serve our ishtadev slowly and slowly everything happen and in madhurya kadambini this all is explained vishwanath chakravarti pad is explained the more and more bhajan you do the more and more in the parallel these moods manifest in your heart automatically sadhak yahan par bhajan kar rahe hain to sadhak is doing bhajan here and slowly and slowly they are putting water in the seed of bhajan seed of bhakti like if you don't put water into a plant then the plant will die exactly like that so if you do, so if you take diksha mantras and you so when you listen to hari katha and to kirtan slowly and slowly you see plant of bhakti will level up Vishnu Chakravarti Pad explained. He said you have to listen Hari Katha from the lotus mouth of your Guru. And slowly and slowly in our heart, the stability. The people, those are unflinching faith. They don't have interest in listening to Guru's Hari Katha. Then it's very hard for them to develop spiritually. So this is all explained in scriptures. स्पीकिंग नाउ एंड देन so keep chanting holy names and everyone develops spiritually there are so many things that i can say but it's this is stop like there are so many acharyas they are completely absorbed in the mood and then they attain the mood of like doing after doing guru seva what is guru seva so there are lot of type of seva people are doing a lot of seva but in their heart there is duplicity and uh, cheating propensity such guru seva is never blessed so it should be without duplicity and without cheating propensity then you do guru seva like same inside and same outside so without any duplicity Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written, like your inner and outside, the mood should be same, and there should be no duplicity. And then you serve, then it's good. So there's also Guru Sevak Tatham, like from a club to. There are so many types of Guru Sevak examples that are servants of Guru. Like outside they are doing Guru Seva, but inside. in their heart they have cheating propensity like like a club where after a club where there's they explained about karna who lied to his guru he didn't like uh, do a less guru seva but karna there's also bishma pitama bishma pitama also comes as example of servant of guru and uh, at the end सात्विक गुरु सेवक एंड तामसिक गुरु सेवक राजसिक गुरु सेवक डिफरेंट डिफरेंट क्वालिटीज ऑफ गुरु सेवक एंड आफ्टर दैट मृतुल गुरु सेवक और गोस्वामी खम इन दैट कैटेगरी गुरुदेव एक्सप्लेन दिस ब्यूटिफुली 
like like Rup Sanatan, the name of Rup Sanatan. They are like so great servants of Mahaprabhu. The topmost servant of Guru is it coming in that category? Rup Goswami Bhai is the topmost servant of Guru. He served Mahaprabhu all he has fulfilled all desires of Mahaprabhu. So that is the glorification of Rupa Goswami Path. And into his lotus feet, I pray that I grow in his lotus feet and under his guidance, we serve Radha and Govinda. So these are the examples of Guru Sevak. That's all in explained. I just told in essence in two words. Now I think the time is up. So thanks for inviting me. Will not take too much of your time. I offer my Dhanvat pronouns to everyone. And and please bless me so that I can serve my Guru without cheating propensity, without duplicity I can serve my Guru bless me everyone and I take this vow that without cheating propensity, without duplicity giving these things up and I'll serve Guru with the pure heart this is the goal of our life and goal of my life that Krishna and Radharani get satisfied and I don't care, we don't, don't, we should not care that if a person is getting satisfied or not. We should always think about that our Guru should be, perhaps Guru should be satisfied with us. If your Guru Dev is satisfied with you, then you will get everything. Everything happens gradually and you develop. So I'll, I'll conclude my Harikata today. आप सभी लोगों ने मुझे पास भगवान महाराज जी के मुकारविंद से ही गुरु तत्व और गुरु सेवकों के बारे में श्रवण किया और स्वरूप के बारे में भी श्रवण किया ये हमारा सौभाग्य है मुझे पास महाराज जी बड़े विस्तार से जो है सब कुछ वर्णन किया है और मुझे पास महाराज जी के बहुत सारे शिष्य हैं योग्य योग्य पुष्पांजलि देने के लिए सब लोग तैयार हैं किंतु तो समय नहीं है इसलिए फिर कभी सुयोग होगा सबसे हम सुनेंगे